Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geekman and today we're going to learn how to create perforated text effects in Photoshop. Now a couple of assumptions that I need to get out of the way right off the bat. Number one, I am using Photoshop CC 2017. So if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, some of the effects may not work as expected. Second, I am using Windows. So if you're using a Mac, when I say hit the control key on the keyboard, that means hit the command key. And when I say hit the alt key on the keyboard, that means hit the option key. So with all of that out of the way, let's get started by hitting control N on the keyboard to bring up our new image dialog box. And let's name this perforated text effect uh, because that's what we're making. Uh, width is going to be 3,840 pixels. Our height is 2,160 pixels. Resolution 150 pixels per inch. Color mode is RGB 8-bit. Background contents are white. You can make this anything you want, but uh, it won't matter because we're going to be creating the text in such a way that you can then drag it into any of your uh, other images that you might need it in. Uh, our color profile is going to be uh, Adobe RGB 1998, as always, and square pixels is our pixel aspect ratio. Hit create, and we're now ready to begin. First thing that we're going to do is change our foreground color to whatever color you want your text to be. Now, I'm going to use blue, but you can use any color that you want. And the blue that I'm going to use is 0099FF, which is just a standard blue. Hit OK, and we now have our blue foreground color. Next thing, we're going to use our text. So let's hit T on the keyboard to bring up the uh, text tool. And I am using uh, a font called Free Road Black. There is a uh, link in the description below where you can download this font for free and use it or you can use whatever font you want. Uh, I'm using it at regular uh, 290 points, sharp, centered, and it picked up the foreground color of blue which is fine. Uh, the next thing that I need to tell you is uh, for this particular font I'm using a kerning value of negative 50 right here. but you can fix that later as I will show you in just a moment uh, with, ever, with whatever font that you are actually using. So let's click right here and write in our text and as always I am using pixel magic and as you can see the kerning is a little off so there's a lot of space here between this P and the I and there's not much space between the A and the G. So we're going to fix that by putting our cursor in between the letters that we want to fix. You hold down alt on the keyboard and use your left and right arrow keys to change the kerning. So for example, if I use uh, the right arrow key, things get further apart. And if I bring the left arrow key, they get closer together. So then I'm going to fix all of these uh, by bringing them closer together so that they all roughly match the A, the spacing that we use for the A. Uh, and that looks pretty good. Once you're happy with the way that it looks, go up here to the check mark, hit the check mark, and you're now ready with your text. Now, one thing that you want to make sure that you do uh, is go back to your move tool, which is V on the keyboard, uh, and then just grab your text and center it as best you can uh, so that nothing will run off the edges of your image. Okay, if uh, when we go to a step that's coming up uh, and we blur this text, you don't want any of that blur to be off the screen, otherwise it will ruin the effect. So here we are centered on our image. The next thing that we have to do is we need to select the text and only the text. And the way that we're going to do that is we bring our uh, cursor over here to our layers palette over the T for the text layer. You can see pixel magic, that is our text layer. Uh, and then we hold down control on the keyboard and you'll see that our cursor changes to a hand with a dotted line outline square. That means that if I now click on the T itself, I will then have a selection of that text layer and only the live pixels in that text layer. So once we have that layer selected, we can then turn off that layer. We don't need to see it anymore. And what we are going to now do is move over to our channels palette. Now if you don't see the channels palette over here, all you have to do is go up here to window and go down to channels, click on that, and then you will see your channels palette. Once you see the channels palette, what we want to do is create a brand new channel. So you go down here to create new channel and click on that and you will have an alpha one channel. Once you have that alpha one channel, you want to fill this selection with white and you'll see that our foreground has changed to white. Uh, and that is because in channels, you can only use black or white. So you want to fill it with white. Our foreground is white. That means hold down alt and click on backspace and it will fill your selection with white. 
Once we have that, we need to deselect, and that is Control and D on the keyboard. That deselects our selection. And the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to, as I mentioned, blur this text. Okay, we're going to give it a little bit of a blur. So go up here to Filter, go to Blur, and go to Gaussian Blur, and we're going to make it a blur of 25 pixels. Okay, you can see that that blurs it pretty much uh, uh, pretty pretty well, I would say. Uh, so let's hit OK, and we now have our Alpha 1 with blurry pixel magic text on it. And as you can see, I made sure that nothing would go outside of the actual image. Okay, once we have that, here comes a little bit of the magic. We're going to use the Pixelate ha Color Halftone filter on this. So you go up here to Filter, go to Pixelate, go to Color Halftone, and then we're going to use our Color Halftone. Now, this depends, uh, using this filter depends on the size of the text that you're using. For the text that I'm using, or if your text is roughly this size, you want to use a max radius of 35. If your text is larger than what you see here on my screen, uh, let's say it's a much larger piece of text or just one giant letter, uh, you, your max radius will need to be increased to maybe 45 or 50. Uh, the channels here will all always stay at 200. Okay, but the max radius gets bigger as your text gets bigger or smaller as your text gets smaller. Uh, through experimentation, I have found that if your text gets down to uh, small enough that you need your max radius to get lower than 25, uh, it doesn't really look very, w very good with this effect. So I would stick with larger fonts uh, at larger sizes. So for this particular tutorial, we're using a max radius of 35, and all of our channels are set to 200. Hit OK, and we now have kind of a pop art looking pixel magic text. Once we have that, we now need to make a selection of this alpha channel the same way that we did before. You hold down control and then you click on the uh, image, the thumbnail image in the channel's uh, palette. And you can see that we now have marching ants around the circles of our pixel magic text. The next thing that we need to do is we need to turn on the RGB layer, which will also turn on the RGB uh, channels, and then we want to turn off the Alpha 1 channel. We don't need that anymore. Then we're going to go back to our Layers uh, palette, and we're going to click on Background, and we're going to create a new layer. So let's go down here and create a new layer, and let's name this layer Text, just so that we know what's on there. Okay, and now that we are on our text layer and we have made sure that the foreground color is the color that we want our text to be, we can now fill these, this area with our foreground color. And the way that we're going to do that, again, is we're going to hit Alt and Backspace. And we have now filled with our color. So then we can hit Control D on the keyboard to deselect. And we now have pixel magic looking very blurry but with circles all throughout. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to uh, create a layer mask on our text layer of the original text. And that will cut out our original text into this. Um, so what you do is you hold down once again control and then click on the T and that will create a selection around what is our original text. If I turn it on, you can see that, see? Uh, and then all we need to do on our text layer, make sure that it's selected, is go down here to create layer mask, click on that, and we now have perforated text. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of layer styles to this text in order to make it look as good as it can for this effect. Uh, and it's very easy to do this. You can use almost anything, but for this effect, we're going to use a stroke. And our stroke is going to be a size of 2, position inside, blend mode of normal, opacity of 70%, overprint is checked, fill type is a color, and the color that we're using is white. That's all Fs. Okay, the next thing that we're going to use is an inner glow. Okay, and that's going to be a blend mode of linear dodge add, opacity of 25%, uh, noise is going to be zero, and the color that we're using is once again white, that's all Fs. Uh, technique is softer, source is the center, choke is zero, size is 40, contour is going to be this guy right over here, which is half round. Let's see it, yes. Uh, Anti-alias is unchecked, range is going to be 50, jitter is 0%. Last thing that we're going to do is we're going to give it a drop shadow to separate it from the background, so click on drop shadow. And the blend mode that we're using is just going to be normal, and the color that you're using here 
uh, whatever color you made your text originally, and I made my text originally way up over here, uh, just drag down until you get to a nice dark version of that color. Okay, I'm using this color, which is 00416D, but whatever color you've chosen, just choose a darker version of it uh, to make this uh, shadow look correct. Uh, and then just make the opacity about 60%, angle of 135 degrees, use global light, always unchecked. Distance is going to be 14, spread is 0, size is 10, contour is going to be linear, which is the default. Uh, Anti-alias is unchecked, and noise, we're going to give it just a slight bit of noise of 2%. Layer knocks out drop shadow is checked. We are done with this effect. The last thing that we're going to do, uh, first let's just hide the effects there. The last thing that we're going to do in order to be able to use this text anywhere we want at whatever size we want is we are now going to turn this into a smart object. And the way that we do that is you right click on the text layer, go down here to convert to smart object, click on that and you now have your text as a smart object. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe. I do new tutorials every Tuesday. And once again, this is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.